So watching your videos made me realize two things. The first is that I should probably read more nonfiction, and the second is that I should probably make a list of all the books that I've read. I do that with movies, but I don't do that with books. Because I don't own the majority of the books that I've actually read, I probably forgot one or two. But regardless, all the ones that I came up with here are ones that made big impacts on me. I also learned that fantasy is without a doubt my favorite genre. But anyways, in no particular order, the first book I'm going to talk about is Life of Pi. Life of Pi is about faith and loss, but it's also about surviving on a boat with a tiger. It's got a lot of interesting survival elements that make the plot go along quickly, but it also connects itself back to like philosophy and theology and things like that. I just appreciate when a book tries to do both of those things and can do it really well. I'm going to clump my two next books together. Um, they're uh, the Harry Potter series and the Chronicles of Narnia series. Both of these books effectively did the same thing for me. I initially read both of these series when I was young. Harry Potter is what I started with, and that's uh, one of the series that I would say got me into reading or to enjoy reading as much as I do. And Chronicles of Narnia is what I read whenever there was a lull in the release of one of the books, whenever I was waiting for the next one to come out. Both of these series are, of course, fantasy epics. I'm sure that you've all read them all before, too. And they both hold a special place in my heart for a lot of reasons, mainly the getting into books thing. And more than that, they were just generally the first sagas that I got into. So here's my setup to show you guys the rest of the books that I actually do own, um, stacked upon other books that did not quite make the cut. Let me uh, move Lord Darkanon. This is Lord Darkanon, by the way. She uh, says hi. She loves you. Um, so the first book I... Uh, wanted to show you is American Gods. Also, these aren't in any particular order. Um, American Gods by Neil Gaiman. It's a fantasy novel. Um, weirdly enough, I think that this is the first book that I actually kind of chose on my own that uh, someone didn't pick for me to read. It's about the nature of what we worship um, in our modern society versus like what people worshipped back in previous societies, so there are the old gods like Zeus and Poseidon, and um, they rule over the stuff like the land and the sea. American Gods is about newer gods that rule over newer technologies and things, so there's a god of television. Yeah, just when I read this book, it made a really big impact on me, it made me want to read um, more books like this. Here's the first chapter if you wanted to, or the first page if you wanted to read it. Next book, and still my favorite book, is Cloud Atlas. Um, this is written by David Mitchell. It's a novel about six different stories that interact with each other in kind of weird ways. They all happen at different times, but there is a reincarnated character who goes through each one of them, um, and there's similar themes and similar stories that happen in all six of them and uh it does an interesting thing where it parts in the middle so each of the stories will end halfway through um it'll tell half of them and then through the second half it'll tell the rest of the stories it's really good i um read this when i was in high school maybe college um and yeah, I've loved it ever since I've taken it on most trips, just because I really just like opening it really to any random page. David Mitchell does a really good job. Um, here's the first page if you'd like to read it. But he does a really good job of uh, changing up his voice um, for each passage. Next up is Into the Wild. This is a book I read in high school. Um, yeah, this, when I read it, it uh, just made me feel like both small and big at the same time. Um, it's about a guy who runs into the wild. I'm sure that you guys probably have heard of this before. Um, yeah, it just made a really big impact on me. But yeah, this book made me feel the stereotypical, like, nothing really matters in this modern life that we live, but also kind of everything matters. And yeah, I just like it a lot. Next book, and yes, I hate myself too, is Infinite Jest. I mean, yeah, what can be said about Infinite Jest? It's the stereotypical option for 
any white dude in college to have on their shelf. This is also kind of like Cloud Atlas. It's just so many different stories that aren't uh, told linearly, linearly. David Foster Wallace just really has a good way of uh, writing to make it feel like you have had the experiences that the characters have um, and making it feel like he's talking about them without judging. Here's the first page. Yeah, it's a big book. Um, and I do think that there is a bit of effort justification when you get to the end, and that's why a lot of people like it, um, myself a bit included in that. I do think that just having read something so massive and put something and put so much time into this, uh, it has given me more appreciation than if I just read, you know, something that was shorter but had the same ideas in it. But there are still some really interesting ideas. Uh, the most interesting part to me was the stuff about addiction. Um, and that's really, there's a lot of stuff about addiction, but the stuff about the video that will make you get addicted to it uh, and about the main character's father. This next book is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. It is uh, another fantasy novel. It's by Ransom Riggs. Um, this really clicked with me because of not only the story, but the fact that Ransom adds pictures into his book. Um, and I think that it was just such a neat reading experience. Just being able to get both um, the reading stuff and also getting, getting pictures of what Ransom viewed as his idea of what the thing should look like. It's just a different reading experience um, than I was used to when I read this. Also, it's just a really fun story. It's basically like X-Men, but if all the mutants had like bad powers. Here's the first page if you'd like to read it. And the atmosphere is the thing that I like most about this book. It's got a kind of creepy-ish atmosphere, um, as you could probably tell from all the pictures and the little girl floating on the front. But it's also like a YA novel, so it's not like that creepy. Next book is The Fault in Our Stars. Uh, this is by John Green, which you guys know I love John Green. Um, I love basically everything that he does. Um, not all of his books, but this one is not even my favorite one. But this one, I feel like, uh, has made the biggest impact. Just obviously because of how big this book got and how big the movie was. I feel like this was a representation of people online becoming big in real life. The story is of course about two teenagers who have cancer uh, and are living with that and kind of trying to get past that. It's about illness and how people aren't defined by their illness. It is tragic and very sad, but it also has some other interesting ideas in it about um, authors and authorial intent, uh, which are things that we've talked about on this channel already, and you guys know that that interests me, yes. And the last book I wanted to mention was The Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, this isn't a book that I like as much now as I did when I first read it, but it is one that made a big impact on me. Um, yeah, I kind of view pop science now as being less interesting as when I initially like got into it. But yeah, the book is basically about the idea of uh, the tipping point, which is something that Malcolm Gladwell states needs to happen for something to go viral, basically. It's basically talking about virality. Um, and it makes some interesting observations, but I don't know, Malcolm Gladwell's style just at this point doesn't do much for me, and I haven't read it in a while, um, so I don't think that it would make as much of an impact on me now, but when I was in high school, I thought that this was a really interesting concept, and I really liked pop science back then, even though I didn't really have a name for it. Um, I'm trying to move away from pop science because I don't think that it is as helpful as it may seem on the surface, or as you may think that it is, um, or at least as I once thought it was, and yeah, 
the tipping point.